Hey guys, what's up? It's Lucas here again, and this is my first handheld. The Sega Game Gear was revolutionary for its time. It had a backlit color screen and played the same games as contemporary TV consoles at a time when Nintendo was still marketing the original Game Boy. Anyone with a Game Gear assuredly remembers it fondly, but you also know the story. Battery life was a huge issue. It was more expensive than Nintendo's handheld, and largely sharing games with other systems meant you didn't really need one to enjoy its library. All of these are undeniable facts, and yet, if you had a Game Gear in the 90s, you'll know that no Nintendo could compare with the gaming nirvana of full console titles on the go. Now, 30 years have passed and technology has certainly grown up, but with the Aya Neo PC gaming handheld, I'm having a bit of deja vu. And as a Game Gear kid, I mean that in the best of ways. Right off the bat, it's clear that the Neo is a special little device. In fact, Aya as a company is impressive in its own right. It first surfaced on the internet in 2020 with a prototype literally made of Lego and Joy-Cons, and at that point, many rightly wondered if it was even a serious product. But, lo and behold, a mere 12 months later, Aya was already shipping the Neo to its first round of customers in China and topping the charts for international sales on Indiegogo. For anyone who unfortunately participated in the ill-fated Smash Z crowdfunding campaigns, this is an astonishing rate of development. And based on everything I've seen, Aya is just getting started. This video has actually been a long time in coming, and that's purely due to the staggering rate of updates, both from Aya and similar gaming handhelds. But on the bright side, that means more time spent with the Neo to form my impressions, especially in the context of unfolding events. So, now that the dust has settled a bit, how does the Aya Neo stack up? Let's find out. Before we get started, you might be wondering, what exactly is the Aya Neo? Well, your eyes don't deceive you. This really is a full-fledged Windows gaming PC running native x86 games in a handheld form factor. It's nearly identical in size to a Nintendo Switch, but there's a vast gulf between the two in terms of gaming performance and library. The hardware here is about on the level of an Xbox One S, but with enough characteristics of an Xbox Series S to keep it relevant in the coming years. For the technically inclined, full specs include an AMD 4500U APU, which is a system on a chip that's packing both a 6-core 2.3GHz CPU, which can boost up to 4GHz, and a Vega 6 GPU. The SoC is paired with 16GB of DDR4 4266MHz RAM, which might sound like a lot, but keep in mind that memory will be shared between the CPU and GPU in this configuration. Also included is either 512GB or 1TB of NVMe storage, and that is user upgradable, so any standard 2280 NVMe drive will work. Even though it isn't officially supported by Aya, you're probably going to want to upgrade that storage at some point because there is no SD card or other expandable storage option on the Neo. SSDs are the standard in new generation console games, and that will soon apply to PC ports as well. Any sort of camera and microphone are also notably absent, so you'll have to bring your own headset if you want voice chat. That said, you do get a couple extras as well. Obviously, the main highlight is the integrated Xbox-compatible controller, and that is complete with haptic feedback, clickable thumbsticks, and even analog triggers, although this particular unit is an early model that only has digital triggers instead. But this is where those updates I referred to get interesting. Many aspects of the Neo's design have already been updated for new customers, so to get everyone on the same page, Aya is generously providing an upgrade kit to early model backers. Nearly everything about the integrated controller and shell is getting an upgrade to bring it up to truly first-class standards. Analog triggers, better haptics and speakers, and improved screen calibration 
are just some of the enhancements users can expect when the Neo achieves its final form in August or September. This level of customer support is honestly some of the best I've ever seen in any crowdfunding campaign and deserves being mentioned. Also worth mentioning is that every Neo has integrated Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 support, gyro and accelerometer for rotation-based controls, and dual bottom firing stereo speakers. The screen is an HIPS 1280 x 800 affair, so that is a 16 x 10 aspect ratio at 215 pixels per inch. 800p or essentially 720p might not sound like much in this day and age, but for a handheld of this size it's perfectly reasonable, and the lower resolution is a good target for demanding games on this hardware. For connectivity, the INU features a 3.5mm combo headphone jack and three USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C ports, two of which are quote-unquote fully featured meaning you can use them for charging and docking to an external display, while the third port is for data transfer only. This is an incredibly dense little machine, weighing in at just about 650 grams or 1.4 pounds. And a lot of that is due to the 47 watt hour fast charging battery, and trust me, you'll need it. Gaming is one of the most power hungry tasks you can run on a PC, so out of the box you're looking at anywhere from 2 to 5 hours of battery life depending on the game being run. There are ways you can improve that by tweaking power settings and processor frequencies, but this is of course a double edged sword. I love the fact that because this is a PC I can do whatever I want with it, but also because this is a PC, getting everything configured the way you want isn't always a frictionless experience. Whether or not you're a tinkerer though, the experience of gaming on a handheld like this is second to none. And really, the Neo offers probably the least fuss I've ever had just playing PC games on a handheld. Downloading Steam or your other favorite launchers and jumping into the content of your choice could hardly be simpler, with minimal tweaking required to get playable performance. A surprising amount of games just work, and better than you might expect. Almost everything 8th generation and older will run at medium or even high graphic settings and 30 to 60 frames per second. And because this is a PC, your purchases and save files will automatically sync through the cloud from any other PCs you might already own. That freedom is what really makes a system like this a worthwhile addition to your household. But of course, the Aya Neo isn't the only device of its kind on the market. There's also devices from GPD, One Netbook, and even Valve, all aiming to bring PC gaming to a portable form factor. Considering that before this year, the market was essentially owned by GPD, this is an incredible turn of events, and it is impossible to talk about Aya Neo in a vacuum. You really can't go wrong with any of these devices, so why buy a Neo? For me, the answer is simply comfort. The Neo's ergonomics are some of the best I've tried yet, very closely imitating the feel of a real Xbox controller. It's not perfect, the range of motion on the analog sticks is somewhat narrow, so I found myself having to turn down in-game sensitivity to compensate, but that's a small price to pay for what is otherwise exactly the controller experience I want it to be. It might be hefty, but the weight is balanced well enough that it's no problem here. It's also quiet, and even at full load, heat dissipation is excellent. While you can hear the fan running, you won't feel any heat transferring to your hands, even in extended play sessions. The buttons are clicky and precise, and the D-pad is good enough that you'll have no problems in platformers and fighting games. Another advantage of the Aya Neo is how it embraces the fact that it is a PC, rather than ignoring or working around it. Built into the controller are buttons for the Windows Start menu, Task Manager, Escape, and a keyboard toggle, and in the absence of a physical keyboard, these really come in handy. Unfortunately, by default, the keyboard button toggles the garbage accessibility keyboard from Windows XP, 
not the more modern touch keyboard included with Windows 10. This is more Microsoft's fault than IA's, seeing as there's still no built-in way for Windows to toggle the touch keyboard in full screen applications. I found this incredibly frustrating, so I wrote an application that will replace the old keyboard with the new one outright. It'll work on any Windows PC, not just IA, but I especially recommend it here. I'll leave a link in the video description if you'd like to try this and other tweaks on my website, lucasc.me. Despite Windows not being entirely suited to this kind of device, it's still my first choice for its sheer level of versatility. Productivity is just a USB dock away, and the gaming options are endless. Whether it's new games, old games, or emulators, it's all here. I even completed two days work using only my Neo, and the experience was completely seamless. While it's not going to compete with a high-end desktop and heavy graphics workloads, for day-to-day -day productivity on a 4K external monitor, I could honestly forget that I'm working on such a small device. I can't say this should be your primary PC, but for some people, it definitely could be, and that is impressive. Of course, all of this does come at a price. Consoles traditionally subsidize hardware with software royalties, but third-party PC manufacturers have no such storefront to generate ongoing revenue. The final price of the Ioneo hasn't been set in stone just yet, but it's currently expected to retail for around $1,100 if you purchase from Aya directly. This really isn't surprising if you consider that you're essentially buying a laptop, but that price is still likely to generate sticker shock for some. In that case, I'd say consider the fact that you won't ever have to buy games just for the Aya Neo, and you can bring your entire game library with you for free. In typical PC fashion, the cost is higher than a console up front, but free online services and infinite cross-buy pay dividends long term. Even if you compare it against something like the recently announced Steam Deck, the asking price really isn't that out of line. You're getting double the SSD and a full Windows license in a more compact package. A comparable Steam Deck would cost upwards of $900 anyway, so $1100 really isn't that big a leap if you prefer a more traditional control scheme. Of course, PC manufacturers aren't the only ones announcing handhelds these days. But let's be clear here, the Aya Neo is not a Nintendo Switch competitor. In my opinion, these devices address two very different markets, and I probably don't need to tell you which one you personally belong in. Just like in the 1990s, Nintendo already has an incumbent platform that's selling like gangbusters, and while it may not be as powerful as the Aya Neo, it offers a compelling alternative for a fraction of the cost. But on the other hand, if the idea of a handheld gaming PC excites you, there's probably nothing Nintendo could do to make the Switch appeal to you instead. There's no denying the value of that experience, of course, but a Switch will never be a PC. If you can appreciate that, the Aya Neo offers a similar nirvana much like that of the Sega Game Gear 30 years ago. The existence of cheaper alternatives doesn't diminish the value of one-to-one -one compatibility with a high-end desktop experience. This is a niche product, but it's a niche I'm glad to be a part of, and I couldn't be happier to see it grow as the market expands. Even with other options out there, the Aya Neo remains the only handheld gaming PC I can recommend without reservation, and I'm excited to see what Aya has next in store. For the first device from a new company, that is extremely impressive. If you're interested in the Aya Neo, I'll leave a link in the video description where you can pre-order one. There's no affiliation or sponsorship, I'm just as happy as you are that this thing exists, and I hope that Aya can succeed and keep making handhelds like this in the future. That about does it for this video though. As always, thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you did indeed enjoy this video. And check out my website at lucasc.me for more tech perspectives like this one. With that, I'll see you next time.